What up, though? What's going on, man? Welcome to my new podcast, Allen as Fuck, where I give you the real, how I am, my thoughts, the rawness, Allen AF. I'm unapologetically myself. So that's the, that's where the name come from. And you know, I, certain things I can only say on TV and other people's podcasts, but I don't get to speak my mind that often. So that's why I decided to do this. And welcome to some real shit. So go ahead and get started. It's my first one, episode one. You know, these pictures behind me, man, they represent Detroit where I'm from. I live in LA, but this is my city. Right here, that's my that's Cass Tech, my wife's high school right there. And above that, it's the Renaissance Center. That's downtown Detroit and Canada over here. We we right across the water. And then there's the Renaissance Center over here as well. St. Andrews, where Eminem used to rap. The Thinker, whatever he's called. I forgot what he was called right there, man. Heart Plaza. Look at that over there. That over there, the Tigers. See them D's on them seats? Detroit Tigers right there. There's a lot of ass been kicked in that stadium. I'm not even talking about, about the professionals. I'm talking about the fans. Fans kick ass in that stadium. This, this is Hart Plaza and all that good stuff, man. That's the Joe Louis fist up here. Right up there. This is Detroit paraphernalia. My wife from Detroit, too. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to get the show started, man. Today, today we're going to talk about generations because this younger generation, they're different. They are, they are different. Not wrong, just different. They have different standards, and that's cool. Like, it's nothing for the younger generation to say, yeah, you know, I, I'm a man, I sleep, with, you know, I sleep with women and men, but I prefer women. And then they don't get judged. That's just how it is. No one judges them for that. And that's... That's cool. You know, my generation, we didn't play that. My generation will call you gay if you stare somebody in a bathroom shower for two seconds. You could have been daydreaming. You know, you'd be in the middle school shower daydreaming about last night's meal and you happen to see somebody's nipples. Oh, you gay. Oh, you he was looking at me, man, he gay. And you gay for the rest of your life. You labeled gay. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of your life. <laughs> but this new generation, man, they don't play that. They're like, hey, listen, dude, I mess with men and women that don't judge me. And, you know, I'm going on a date with this beautiful woman. And after this date, I'm going over to my homeboy house and suck some dick. And, you know, we're going to watch Netflix. And they just flat out tell you. And, you know, and don't nobody judge. They'll be like, oh, shit, what you going to watch on Netflix? You like it's like they didn't hear the whole part about he gonna suck his boy dick. They just gonna just watch Netflix, you know. Hey, and you know, I actually I like that about them. I like that they can live how they want to live without being judged. I love it because I think that everyone should live like that. You know, live how you want to live without being judged. Because, you know, men, for instance, we put women in boxes, you know, and we, 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 we tell a woman how she should live. And, well, women don't do that. Even, even, oh, even other women tell women how they should live. A young lady wouldn't wear that, and women shouldn't do that, and this and that and that and this. Don't listen to none of them. Ladies, if you want to be whatever you want to be, you should do it. Don't let nobody hold you back from your whoredom. Do it, damn it. Go on out there and be the whore that you wanted, that you inspired to be. I support you. I support you wholeheartedly. You hear me? I will stand behind you. I will lift you up. I will not judge you. And if you want to practice, I will put my number at the bottom of the screen so you can hit me up. I am not going to hold you back in life. Be everything you want to be. I'm tell, I'm I'm sick of people putting people in handcuffs, handcuffs and boxes and shit. That's why I like this younger generation. They don't play. Only thing I'm confused about this younger generation, 
is, okay, they wild as hell. All the drugs they want to do, they do it. All the sex they want to have, no matter who they want to have it with, they have it. But their ears are sensitive. Like, you can't say shit to these little bastards. They got the most sensitive ears. You can't say shit. I'm triggered. I don't say that I'm triggered. You know, it's like, shut the fuck up, you little motherfuckers. Get some balls. My generation, you can say anything to us. Anything. I mean, you might get your ass whooped. But you can say it. You know what I mean? You can speak your mind to my generation. Like my, the older generation, older than me, uh, their whole thing was, they were prideful people. You know, my mother and the generation, they was prideful people. Their only thing was, uh, they were secretive. Like what goes on in this house, stays in this house. That was a rule for my mother's generation. What goes on in this, in this house, stays in this house. And that's, that's cool. I mean, it, it really wasn't cool, you know, because they told all the shit that I did. It's, it, what that mean is don't be in these streets embarrassing me. That's what that means. You better not be in these streets embarrassing me talking about how, what we doing in my house. But they get on the phone and tell they, they, they friends, you know, Alan and Pete in the bed. My mother used to tell her friends that I peed in the bed. I'm like, mama, I thought you said what happens in the house stands in the house. Well, why are you telling your friends that I peed in the bed? Yes, that accidentally slipped out. I peed in the bed. Up until I was 12 years old, I peed in the bed. <laughs> I know people are like, damn, that's old as hell. It is. It's old as hell. I was peeing in the bed until I was 12 years old. Uh, I'm not afraid in a minute. I told you, this is Allen as fuck, man. I'm giving it to y'all real. I peed in the bed until I was a preteen. Yes, I did. I used to have dreams that I was in my friend's backyard and I was using a bathroom. Um, well, I was actually using a bathroom. I woke up wet and not in a good way. And I used to just get out the bed, put the pee sheets on the bottom, Crawl back in the bed to the clean sheets on top of me. I did that till I ran out of cover. <sighs> yeah, I used to pee in the bed, dude. And before y'all judge me, the reason I used to pee in the bed is because my environment was toxic. I didn't have a way to express myself because what goes on in this house stays in this house. So I couldn't talk to nobody about the toxicity that I was living in. I couldn't talk to no one about the abuse, uh, the violence. I couldn't speak to anyone about this environment, this poison environment that I was living in, you know? So it had to come out of me some kind of way. It was me peeing in the bed. That's a, that, and that is a, um, that is a condition. A lot, of, a lot of people pee in the bed to express, them, like not to express themselves, but it happens. You pee in the bed. Like, Murderers, sometimes when murderers uh, 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 are being psychopaths or whatever we want to call them, serial, serial killers. When they are kids, before they kill people, sometimes they pee in a bed. And then, they, you know, they go out and kill little, little animals and then they start killing people. It's a sign. My, my family ignored that sign when I was peeing in the bed at 12. They just called me a nasty nigga. It was, <laughs> it was a reason I was doing it, you know, but we didn't believe in therapy. And uh, when black people dealt with mental health back in the day, they were like, you look, you better get over that shit. That was my therapy. And I was like, okay, shit, I guess I got to get over it. I used to actually pray. I remember praying, praying to God that I don't pee in a bed. I used to... I wouldn't go over other people's houses to spend the night because I was afraid that I was going to pee in the bed or on the floor or wherever we slept. True story. I, I wouldn't, I didn't go over people's houses to spend the night. My brothers used to go over their cousin's house to spend the night. I wouldn't go. I was scared. I was like, I'm not about to go over there and pee in the bed. You know, I was traumatized. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't no serial killer, nothing like that. I grew up in an environment that wasn't conducive to a, a, a child. I saw too much too fast. And I couldn't, my little 12 year old mind couldn't handle it. And I was peeing in the bed. That's what happened. So, it wasn't my fault. I wasn't a nasty nigga like my family thought I was. I don't pee in the bed no more though. I got help. I got help regardless of how I was raised. I got help. So, yeah, like I, like I was saying, <clears throat> I was raised in a, in a violent um, household. Well, we, we're, we're the Cunninghams. So we, was, we were funny as hell, dysfunctional, and violent. That's a crazy combination, but that's what we were. And um, whenever things got, didn't go our way, we would get violent. And with that being said, the first time I got my heart broken, I got violent. I fell off like a bitch. I did. I can admit it. In my early 20s, I put my hands on a woman. And I, she ended up in the hospital. And um, it was fucked up. It still bothered me. It bothers me to this day to what I did. I couldn't believe I did that, man. I could have killed her. And over Because she cheated. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't handle it like a bitch. And the reason I say that is because I was cheating. I was cheating all the time. But like a man, I couldn't take my own medicine. I couldn't deal with my own medicine. I acted like a bitch when I found out she was cheating on me and I put hands on her. I put hands on her because that's what I was taught to do. I was the environment I was living in. I was taught to do that. I was taught, trained how to treat a woman. And I acted accordingly. I acted, that's what I knew how to do. I got help, you know, went to anger management classes, court ordered anger management classes, best thing that ever happened to me. And one thing they told me in those classes, this lady, this lady told me, she said, you saw your girl, a lot of her friends, and a lot of her family. Why were you surprised when she lied to you? And I was like, Wow, that's some deep shit. And that changed my life forever. That changed my life forever, man. So when people lie to me, hurt me, or whatever, I don't get violent anymore. I understand they're human, you know? And if I did something to hurt them, I can't get mad because they did something in return to hurt me. So yeah, that was a tough lesson. It was a tough lesson, dude. I had to work on myself. And I'm good now. I mean, I'm still a work in progress. I'm not, uh, I'm not about to go on stage and smack a comedian, but I'm good now. I'm good. I am. I promise you that. I promise you that I'm good. So, uh, I, let, I, I let a lot out already. I didn't even know I was going to talk about that. You know, I didn't tell y'all I used to be in the bed at 12 years old and shit. Told y'all about my childhood was fucked up, you know. Told y'all about the domestic violence I used to, I actually did. Wow. I should have changed the name of this, this, this show because I didn't know I was going to get this real with it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Generations. That's what I was trying to talk about. So Generations, man, are... You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of things about, you know, people in di people are different in generations. Like my generation, again, I talked about, um, they, they, they call you gay quick. Another thing in my generation about the gay shit is, you know, when I was coming up, a lot of drugs because of Ronald Reagan bitch ass, he put crack cocaine in the black community. So he had, you know, it was a lot of kingpins, a lot of dr drug dealers and drug dealing going on. So I saw both sides of the fence. I saw a lot of people make a lot of money selling drugs, and I saw a lot of families getting broken up because of drugs. So we was coming up as kids, and drug dealer have a party. 
And we could go to the drug dealer's party. And at the drug dealer's party, it was killers, gangsters, drug dealers, uh, slutty women, hoes, whatever you want to call them, at the drug dealer party. And we would have a ball at the drug dealer party. And we wanted to know the drug dealer. We wanted the drug dealer to say our name when he was out and about and this fly shit. But up, Alan, what's happening, dog? You good, Cunningham? You know what I mean? That meant something when a drug dealer spoke to you because to have that respect from a drug dealer. We used to hang around murderers and drug dealers, but we couldn't have a gay friend. How fucked up is that? That we, <laughs> that we, we, we can go out and hang out with a murderer or a drug dealer and a killer you know, Killer Steve. We can hang out with Killer Steve or go to Ray Ray party. But if gay Chris, you know, wanted to, uh, 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 wanted to go to the movies, we couldn't go to the movies with gay Chris because we would be called gay. That's fucked up. Chris ain't never killed nobody. Chris ain't never sold drugs. Chris didn't do nothing. But suck dick. And we can't hang with Chris. Now, just for the record, I don't have a Chris in my life. I'm just making an example. You know? But that, I'm just saying, it's, it's crazy how like we were raised like that. It should have been the opposite. We should, we should be like, hell no, stay away from them damn drug dealers and killers, murderers and, you know, thieves. Stay away from them criminals. That's what it should have been. Like the younger generation, that's how they are. Younger generation hang with everybody. They don't judge nobody, and that's dope. That's dope. I I appreciate that, you know. And to and to this day, I don't have any gay friends. You know, I'm not having nothing against gay people. Nothing. Not. I don't have anything against them. You know, I'm just saying the way I was raised was it was bananas, man. Our generation was on something. I mean, I love a lot of stuff about our generation, though. I do. I love a lot of stuff about our generation. We, we were unedited. Um, we told you how we felt. We ain't hold no punches. And we, you know, shit, you had to deal with it. We, we had real freedom of speech because hate speech is also freedom of speech. And we said what the hell we wanted to say. And we dealt with it accordingly. If you said some, some slick shit out your mouth, cool but you might get your ass whooped but you can say it you know we wasn't you know we weren't editing people we didn't my feelings wasn't your accountability now this generation now uh the way they feel is your your accountability they will tell you um I don't like the way I, f I don't, when you said that, I don't like the way it made me feel. The fuck? You don't like the way what I said made you feel. But don't listen. Uh, you know, or go, leave. That's how we dealt with this shit. You know, if I had somebody, man, one of my friends said something to me, or anybody said something to me crazy or whatever, if I didn't like it, I, you know, we dealt with it either, you know, I walk away or we fought or, you know, I told him, like, hey, man, watch who you talking to. And that was it. It wasn't like, hey, I don't like the way you made me feel. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, I guess it's cool. Like, did you want to talk about it? But no, you. but they hold other people accountable of their feelings. And that's the weirdest shit to me. Like, it's not my responsibility. Your feelings is not my responsibility. The way you feel is not my responsibility at all. And, you know, you getting triggered and shit. Uh, I, I don't get that. How, how, look, like I told you earlier, I had a real crazy childhood. And in my crazy childhood, if somebody brought up the word, because, you know, in the, you know, I remember um, being a little kid and they had water beds. Water beds was popular back in the 80s and shit. And um, 
somebody brought up waterbed. I won't be like, hey, you can't bring up waterbed. I used to pee in the bed. I, I'm triggered. Don't you ever say waterbed around me again. That's how that's how that shit is, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was never I was never triggered by the things that people said because I I had to deal with my own shit. So what came out your mouth didn't affect my life. That's what I'm trying to say. So st stop getting offended and triggered over everything. And just live. Just live your life and let other people live theirs. You know, like I never, I, uh, especially somebody who I don't know. If I don't know you, you cannot offend me. You may think you can. Okay, perfect example. This white dude, he called me the N-word once. And I beat his ass. Now, I didn't beat him up because what he said offended me. I beat him up because he tried to offend me. So I whooped his ass. I whooped his ass for my ancestors. I had to because they couldn't back in the day. They would have had to take that and swallow it. You know, this is in the this this is in the 90s. I ain't had to take it and swallow it. I whooped his ass because he said that and he deserved to. And when he was running away, he was like, you're still in there. I would be, you know, I'd be the shot of him. But it's fine. You know, it's fine because I didn't already got what I wanted out of the situation. But I don't let, you know, but the point I'm making is I could have just walked away. But, you know, like I said, I did it for my ancestors. But I, I don't let other people's words offend me, especially if you don't know me. Like, if you don't know me, I don't, like, we're comedians. This is what I do for a living. I am a comedian. I, that's my profession. Now, um, I am on stage. I am bona fide. I am bona fide. I do what I do and I love what I do. Um, but some people don't think I'm funny. That's fine. You can, people, you can leave them in the comments. I don't think you're funny. I'm cool with that. That's cool. You know, I'm not offended. That's your opinion. And that's fine. I'm not going to go back and forth. I am funny. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not about to argue with you about your opinion about me. That's what you think, and that's fine. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the only thing I have an issue with this younger generation, about words. Y'all, y'all. Y'all some nasty, freaky, drug using motherfuckers, but y'all cannot deal with words. That shit is weird to me, man. Mm. To talk about, so the so give an example about the toxicity I grew up in. One of my brothers, he um, got into it with his older, his adult sons, and um, long story short, they got into it. He threw him out there. You know, he they, they had their own place, and he told him to get the fuck out the house. So he threw him out the house, whatever. They was about to fight. And he called me up, and he told me the story. And I said, why'd you do that? And he said, because they raised their voice in my house. I was like, well, oh, shit. Well, um, you raised your voice in mama's house? He said, yeah, but mama's a woman. See, that's what I mean. Like, to him, it's okay to disrespect a woman in her house. But he don't want nobody to disrespect him in his house because he's a man. See, respect is not gender. I I learned that too. Respect is I don't just I mean, I don't want to disrespect a man's house. I don't want to disrespect no one's house. So if it's a single mother that lives there or a woman that lives there by herself, I can do what I want to do in her house because it's. Because there's no man here, so I can be disrespectful? No, that's not how I get down. Now, see, I, I, was, I was raised in this, in this environment, man. I didn't have no women in my life. It was just me, uh, all my brothers, my father, my uncles, cousins. The majority of us was men. And my mother was a female in the house. And uh, in the house, it was just me, my brothers, my father, my mother. And... Um, 
I had an older stepsister, but I never really saw her that often. So the only female influence I had in my house was my mother. And she was my mother. She didn't count. So all my, all of these male figures in my house, I'm the youngest too, all these male figures in my house, they used to tell me, you know, like, listen, don't ever, I don't want to ever catch you lying unless you're lying to a woman. That's, that's how, that's how I was raised, dude. That's the kind of shit that I was, I was exposed to, you know, get all the pussy you can get, get all the money you can get. Women are there for your disposal. That's how I was, that's how I was brought up. And it took me, and I lived that way until I had a daughter and she changed me, you know, it was, the, you know, yeah, my daughter changed me. Uh, speaking of women in relationships, so what's her name, Amber Hearst? Uh, she lost the case. And I knew she was going to lose the case when I found out she, she shat in the bed. Um, when she said, shat is the past tense of shit. So the lady took a shit in the bed. And I, the, what was weird about, what was weird about that to me, man, because how you take a shit in the bed and stay? I don't understand that. You gonna shit. Okay, first of all, you, sh you you took a shit in the bed, right? Now, it wasn't a situation with like, you know, you did like me, you used to pee in the bed because there was some, some traumatizing shit that happened in your life. That wasn't the case. You a nasty ass person and you took a shit in the bed. Now, if you decided to take a shit in the bed, someone's bed, then leave. How you gonna stick around? You know, like if I if if I won a lottery, if I had a job and I won the lottery and I wanted to uh, take a shit on my boss's desk because he's an asshole before I left, I take a shit on this desk and I'm like, fuck you. And I'm leaving and I ain't gonna never see him again. That's the point. If you're going to shit on someone's property, make a plan to never never see them again. How are you going to shit on somebody's property and then stay for breakfast? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to take a shit. Be like, so, what you doing for the rest of the day? Oh, I got some errands to run. And I'm about to go see my mom. You know, oh, when I get back, I'm going to clean up the shit that you left in my bed. And then, uh, probably going to go to church. How you going to stay in a relationship? Both of them nasty. I, I love, I'm married now. I love my wife. Right? To have a woman in your corner is the dopest shit ever. The, the right woman in your corner, you can fly. It's the dopest shit ever to have a, the, the right woman in your corner. Um, if my wife got mad at me and took a shit in our bed, our relationship is over. At that point, we have we have moved beyond words. There's nothing.